Hello, welcome back to Nails Vintage World. So today I have a recently reads video for you. I don't think I've done one of these in a really long time, but I, I've been reading some books recently that kind of just don't fit into my usual wrap up. So like my Persephone book reviews or my classic crime or my history book reviews. I've just been reading bits and bobs and I don't really want to do singular reviews for them because there's quite a few. So I thought I'd just do a bit of a job lot for you. So starting off, first book that I read and I read this kind of um just after Christmas in the new year etc etc and it is My Mum Tracy Beaker by Jacqueline Wilson this is published by Doubleday which I think is part of Penguin yes it's part of Penguin um so this is a book that I asked for Christmas from my parents uh because when I was younger I really liked um Jacqueline Wilson books. My favourites were Illustrated Man, Bad Girls, Sleepover, uh, Tracy Beaker obviously. My favourite was Lottie Project because it's historical, of course it was. Um, but when I knew this was coming out I really wanted to read it because I really enjoyed reading Tracy Beaker and watching the TV series as well and I wanted to see where she would be as an adult. So this book is about Tracy and her daughter. This is her daughter Jess, Jess Beaker and it's just Tracy and Jess. Cam is still very much you know foster mom um, and her actual mom it does flitter in and out. But this is about Tracy and Jess. So we meet them and Tracy and Jess live in a tower block. Tracy kind of goes from job to job just literally getting by each paycheck, um, not really able to save anything and Tracy has like a string of boyfriends but Jess isn't worried because they never last for very long and then she gets this new one which lasts a bit longer um, and it's about their life together. So although it is about Jess it's more about Tracy to be honest um, and I really enjoyed this. I was a bit unsure whether they would have uh, the illustrations in it but the illustrations are still there by the original illustrator which funny enough this book is dedicated to. Uh, which is Nick Sharrett and if you look on the inside cover I think the inside cover is brilliant it's just all his illustrations I really enjoyed this it's surprising like how quickly you get back into the swing of reading books from like your childhood authors um, and it made me feel really grown up because there's nothing like your character from your childhood book being an adult paying bills and being a mom themselves is it so it was really nice to get back and to read Tracy's story again, it was, it was really nice. And if you were kind of like my generation, um, where you read Tracy Beaker, then pick it up because I think you'll really enjoy it. And it's lovely to know where Tracy kind of gets off to. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Although now I feel quite old, <laughs> to be honest. I was just like, oh, I feel old now because Tracy's birthday is the 8th of May. I think it's 1990 and I'm 91, so she's just a year older than me. Um, but yeah, just made me feel a bit old. Anyway, so I read that four stars, really enjoyed it. Then I picked up Sophie Kinsella Surprise Me. Uh, this is published by, who is it published by? Black Swan, Brain and Gear. Um, so this is about a young married couple called Sylvie and Dan. They've got good jobs, they've got a nice house, they've got twin daughters and life is pretty good. Um, then they go and um, get their life insurance renewed and they have to go to a doctor and do all these tests etc etc and the doctor says actually you're really healthy you're healthier than most I expect you live to 100 and 102 years old which is another 68 years together and they kind of they're quite set back they're quite shocked at that and they're like what um and they have a little bit of a panic and then they decide that they're gonna kind of do little surprises for each other to keep the romance alive in their marriage now I got to page 139 before I gave up on this book. I decided not to finish it just because I wasn't really enjoying it. Um, and I think life's too short to read books that you're not gonna love. I've read some amazing books by Sophie Kinsella. Can You Keep a Secret is my favorite by her. But I also like um, Remember Me and the Shop of Heart series is also really good. But this one just, it wasn't for me. Um, after the doctor says, oh, you've got another 68 years together, and after that initial shock, the husband, Dan, is 
quite obsessed with sex and he's just like oh, 68 years of sex with the same person and he just keeps coming on about sex and it just really gets on my nerves as, a, as if that's like the be all and end all of a relationship and it's quite it's quite stereotypical I think like the bloke to be bothered by sex why can't she be bothered by sex or how about neither of them are um and it's just like a passing thought rather than like the crux of it and it just it just got on my nerves. I wasn't attached to either of them. He was getting on my nerves and I wasn't attached to her. You know, she started moaning a lot and I was just like, Ugh. so I decided to just uh, finish it. I haven't put this on my Goodreads because I was just like, oh, I'm not sure with like books that I don't finish. I have obviously read part of it, but I haven't, I've read that bit, but I haven't read this bit. So I wasn't sure if I put it on or not. Love to know what you do with your Goodreads when it comes to books that you don't finish. Um, so yeah got rid of that one then I fancied reading an Agatha Christie now I did a bit of a boo-boo now as you know I've read all of Agatha Christie's uh books of Agatha Christie and I love them all she's like my favorite author um but at the beginning of January I reread ABC Murders because over Christmas there had been the adaptation and I was I've got a lot to say about the adaptation that's a video for the future um but I wanted to reread the book essentially it just made me crave the original book which is so much better um so that's what I did and then later on in January I really fancied rereading another Agatha Christie and I and I kind of I did something really silly I had book guilt so I've got so many books on my TBR um that I went no you've got to read a book that you haven't read yet and as I hadn't read this I decided to pick this up this is a graphic novel version of Cards on the Table by Agatha Christie uh, but it has been adapted by this person whose name I cannot say um, inside it is quite kind of comic-y illustrations which I do like I like the illustrations I think it's nice um, Sorry, I've got a dog down here, it's just like lying on my foot. Um, I, I do like it, however, it's short, it's really short, it's like 52 pages or something. I do find that they condense it a bit too much. And to be honest, I don't think I was in the right frame of mind for this. I should have just, forget the guilt, sub the guilt, just pick up an Agatha Christie that you want to read. So, yeah. Um, those books, by the way, are published by Harper. I always get asked about these ones. They're published by Harper, but I don't think... They publish them anymore I think they're out of print uh, so have a look secondhand like secondhand websites or um, shops that sell secondhand books to try and get your hands on them if you want to and finally the last book that I have to share with you was just incredible and it is Dear Mrs Bird by AJ Pierce I was recommended this book uh, by one of you lovely subscribers so thank you for your recommendation because I absolutely adored it this book is about a young 20 something called Emmeline or Emmy Lake and her best friend Bunty and they live together during wartime London. Emmy at the beginning of the book is a secretary but dreams of being a journalist. She also uh, works for the fire department answering uh, the calls that come through. As you can imagine wartime London she's super busy and it's about their lives essentially, um, their love lives and friendships and uh, Emmy dreams of being a journalist and she sees in the paper um, an opportunity that she thinks to be a wartime correspondent she goes to the interview doesn't really listen in the, in the interview but ends up getting the job um, and it's not what she thinks it's for a magazine called women's friend and she's helping to um, go through the agony aunt letters uh, to mrs. bird uh, hence dear mrs. bird uh, and she thinks oh okay uh, but she takes she starts a job and um, she quickly realises that it's not what it should be. Um, Mrs Bird doesn't want to answer any letters about sex or relationships or politics or the war, um, which in wartime London is a little bit tricky, isn't it? Um, and so Emmy takes it on herself to kind of start responding herself. Um, this book was utterly incredible. This book hit me in so many different ways I was so emotional reading this book so sometimes I think authors don't realize how much their book can affect other people um and affect their readership so during 1941 
um, my grandparents were alive, they're a similar age to Emmy doing similar things. Um, my granddad was a soldier, one of my grandmothers was a bomb girl, my other grandmother um, was a parachute packer, um, and my grandma and granddad actually got married during the war. And this book's about work, but it's also about friendships and relationships. And there was times in this where I completely felt like I was with my grandparents in a way, not the characters, but in that sense, it really, I felt wartime and I could feel the emotions that like my grandma would have felt like hoping that my granddad would be okay and stuff like that. And, oh, I was, I was on this just emotional roller coaster and it, it hit me like no book has done for a really long time. Um, and I haven't had grandparents for a really long time. They passed away years ago. And um, it was weird reading this book because I felt like I was with them again. And it was really nice. And it was just, oh, it was just incredible. Um, so uh, I, I owe a debt of, debt of gratitude, really, to the author AJ Pierce because um, it's almost like this little uh, tunnel into the past and I can be with them um, rather than them watching me, if that makes sense. But yeah, uh, AJ Pierce is writing a sequel as well. I'm super happy about it. So yeah, go and get your hands on this book because it's utterly incredible. Uh, if you want to read any of the books that I have mentioned in this video, you can do. I will leave them in the uh, description box for your amusement. Uh, and that's it for this video. Chat to me in the comments all things bookish or just generally how your day is going and I will see you soon. Ooh. Also, any more recommendations on the historical fiction front, anything like Dear Mrs. Bird, I am all over. So <laughs> thank you. Right, take care and I shall see you soon.